installing my wife's Christmas present from my son to her, uh, which is this right here. My son also 3D printed this little holder for my DJI pocket camera, whatever they call this thing, pocket gimbal, but I forget what they call it. Uh, but it's the, the little, I call it the chicken head camera because it's got a, a head on top of it that I'm pointing out here that you can't see. And I'm moving the camera all around and it looks like a chicken head. It's keeping it stable. So it actually does pretty good. But with this little uh, tripod I had on a stabilizer for another camera, I took it off, put that on here. I should be able to set this camera down now and, and maybe get some extra videos, some action shots, you know, like drilling holes and tightening bolts. Uh, where I have to use both hands. So we will see if I can do that in this video. I put one of these cans on my rig last year. Uh, John at Heindel came up with one that uh, was damaged. And I um, got that, mounted it onto Sigmon right where you see it here. It went well. And I keep uh, a few tools, a few other things in there. I also keep a Ranger Jack, which you'll probably see later in this video, uh, just in case I have to change the tire on the side of the road again. And I've got this opened up just as a kind of a go by. I figured all this out once before, so there's no need for me to figure it all out a second time. I'll just copy what I did. Meanwhile, I just took the can again. This is my wife's Christmas present from my son. And this is the hardware pack. Uh, we got all this from Heindel. Should be all the bolts and everything that we need in here to install this. And um, like I said, just took it out of the box. Hadn't even opened it up yet or anything, but I'm going to get it ready to uh, install on the bike and I use a transmission jack that I have here uh, a small rolling transmission jack to support it up against the rig position it where I want it mark it with tape um, go through a couple iterations of that to make sure I get the holes exactly where I need them then I'll drill the holes and bolt the can on so if you've not seen these before they have a little spinny locky tab here technical term other spinny locky tab you can put a lock in but uh, it really it's, locks are for honest people line the camera up again so you turn that up that lets you unlock it just like that and then you can open the ooh there's stuff in here i didn't know there was stuff in here do you know there was stuff in here hey oh a hat Hey, hey, I got a hat. Thanks, John. I did not know John had put hats in here. I hope John knows that he put hats in here. <laughs> Maybe he was just putting them to the side, you know. I'll just keep these here, and now he's done his hats out. But uh, either way, thanks, John. I appreciate it. Motul, the official oil of your old. Cool. I like hats. He didn't put any candy or money in here, though. That's... Had to talk to him about that. There we go. So that's how it works. That's how it opens. Uh, it's, there's a pretty good bit of room in here. It's, it's more useful. You'll see when we put our stuff in it than you think. Especially for stuff that you don't want to get at all the time, but you want it to be handy like a jack um, again this put it over there uh, you can open this and then you can lift the whole can out and the way that i position it is if the lock is down the trunk is locked um, the spare tire is on you can't just unhook and lift the can out um, without taking the spare tire off and going through all that it's it's really not that big of a deal we hadn't had anybody messing with mine but that's the plan to get this installed today. Well, we got a delivery. Four fairly powerful magnets. This is for another project. 
not involving motorcycles. So I don't know if you guys are going to get to see it or not, but here they are. And, and it, they're sticking to the table saw through this three quarter inch piece of plywood. They're, they're that powerful. That's, that's cool. I don't want to, I already stuck one to the table saw like not to have got it off. So, uh, yeah, if you want to see what this is for, you better comment below and say, hey, I want to see what those four magnets are for. Show me what the four magnets are for, because they don't involve motorcycles, and it won't make it on the channel otherwise. All right, all I've done at this point is I know the can goes on here and I've made sure I have tape that is going to be where the holes need to be so that I can take a Sharpie and mark exactly where I need to drill the holes. Okay, I got my handy dandy transmission jack set up with a block of wood on top to make the top surface flat. And then I'm going to set the can right on top of that, kind of nestle it in where it goes i'll be raising it up and eyeballing it uh, probably going to take the tape measure pull some measurements off my rig transfer them back here make sure i'm about close because my setup seems to work really really good and uh yeah so let me do that It's about two and a half inches down, two and a half to two and three quarter inches down here. Back's about four, four and a quarter in. Once it's bolted, there'll be plenty of room with the sidecar fender. And then something I lucked up on last time, but you need to remember to check, is the trunk handle. Try to be careful not to roll the bike. The trunk handle needs to be able to come down and miss. You want to make sure you miss this. So we got plenty of room there. So. All right, that's about where it needs to be. And what I'm going to do is very carefully take the can out, making sure I leave the uh, holder in place. Then I'm going to mark everything so that I know the holder is exactly where it needs to be. And I can regain that position by using the mark lines. Then I'm going to close this up again, double check everything. I want to make sure this is not hitting the tire when the trunk is closed. I want to make sure I don't move and I've got plenty of clearance here. Uh, this, um, you get used to putting the, the cover clip back on, but there's plenty of room in there. You don't want to be any closer than about two fingers. And I discovered these are not in the same place on both rigs. So there's some variability in that cover plug there. So about two fingers seems comfortable. This one's actually slightly further back than mine was mounted. I say slightly, about a quarter of an inch, primarily because of that snap there. Two fingers seems to be about right. Uh, you'll notice a little bit of gap over here. Some of that pulls out as you tighten it down, but I'm going to be putting a bushing on the bottom down here to space the bottom out a little bit and on the inside i don't know if you noticed it on mine but this inner plate here will be cut off because the proper mount hole is actually down here under this crease and i'm going to bolt it above it there's a, there's a hole there so i don't have to drill any new holes in the bracket or the can uh, bracket but that's how it's going to fit
Okay, it's there. Um, the height hasn't changed. Uh, good indication. When I put the marks on, I, I made sure that mark was real tight. You see this is a little loose, but that mark is tight down here. That helps me make sure the position is like I left it. And now I'm going to very carefully double check all the measurements. Again, I've got my rig up there, so I'm going to compare it to it just because I figured all this out once before. It all works. And once I'm happy with the position and everything looks good, I will put the marks where I need to drill the holes. Then I will double check where I'm going to drill the holes. And then I'll actually drill the holes. Okay, I made some very minor positional tweaks. Uh, specifically, I went forward just a slight bit more, maybe a quarter of an inch. And I came up maybe a quarter of an inch to pull this hole further off of this fold, this seam down here. I want to make sure I'm firmly up here. Um, I've also noticed it seems closer between here and the fender than it does on my retro. So I may end up putting the um, bushing, the spacer, up here instead of down here because the box... Um, you know, with this roll, it doesn't sit perfectly flat. I found out one of them needs a spacer or bushing. It's not a big deal. Um, I'll make my final call when I put it in place, but like I did last time, I'm going to go ahead. i got to look at the position of the drill, too, make sure that I get uh, can, can get in here and drill straight. And I'm going to drill this one hole first. Once it's in, I'll put a bolt through it. I'll put the bracket on, make it final adjustments and mark and drill all of the other holes based on this one anchor hole. All right, I'm about ready to drill. I have a vacuum cleaner set up, an angle drill, a 17 64th inch bit that has a pilot point on it. I love pilot point bits. They drill a tiny hole before they drill the full sized hole. They're fantastic. Uh, those happen to be DeWalt. And I'm ready to drill a hole. And actually made sure it was clear on the inside and didn't drill through a uh, can of oil or anything. So that's, that's pretty cool. All right, I opened up the hardware pack. And uh, there's four rubber strips padding outside and inside. I'll also be using touch-up paint and a little ACF 50. These are the mounting brackets. And uh, they'll go on the inside. And I dump the package of bolts out, and I don't know if you notice if anything is missing or not. Um, there's no nuts, so I'm going to have to find some nuts. Hopefully I have some that fit that. Otherwise, I'll be running up to the hardware store and buying some metric, because I'm assuming these are metric. And, uh, yeah, everything else is here, though. It's just I need some nylon lock nuts, preferably. Uh, I guess it has lock nuts. I can use regular ones. So uh, let me let me round up some nuts. Uh, first, I'll confirm these are metric. Looks like about an M6, and this is an M6 1.0 in my gauge here, and that's what it is. So hopefully, I have some M6 1.0. Okay, I got my bucket o metric out. Let's see what we can find in here. Those are just bolts. See, these look like M8s. Uh, could be M10s. Anyway, I know they're not 6s. Let's see, that's some 12 millimeter. Ah, look at this. Right down there. All right, I bet that's M6s. Let me set this down and see if it is. Sure enough. All right. So we're good to go if I don't throw it on the floor and lose it. And I have the one screw in here to anchor that corner. That way I can mark the others. You can see inside I moved the strap up. Uh, didn't, didn't have to cut the strap. It's got two holes in it. 
So I just moved it up. I'll be using that bottom hole and it's well clear of the crease. And then there will be one back here in the back. So that's good. Now, I just need to decide on the bushing, uh, spacing this out. And I had to be careful here because if I pull this in, like I need to drill the hole, then it's going to leave more space here. And what I have to be careful about is that if I if I drill this hole um, and then pull this in, that hole is going to shift position a little bit. So what I'm probably going to do here is I may go ahead, I'm going to do one of these two holes. I, I may do this upper one, go ahead and get it set. I'm going to double check the position with the can in it again real quick, make sure it all still looks good. Um, I'll drill this one hole. Then I'll mark the other two, or I'll drill this one down here and then mark these, but uh, I'll take it slow. Yeah, There's no rush. you couldn't see before. See, I got a lot of clearance here and I've got the same down on the bottom, the, the opposing corner down there as it rocks. So I will fill that. And you can see I put a little nylon spacer in there. Uh, here it is. I have a huge box of these that date back to actually the late nineties. Um, I built a data center and when we installed the rack, we needed spacers to space the racks off of each other. These are our telecommunication relay racks. And we bolted them together for sturdiness. And I forget where I got these, probably a plumbing supply or something like that. But they worked perfect for that. And then in 2005, I got to decommission and completely disassemble that data center, which was a joy. Not really, but anyway. Um, I pulled all of these. I had like gosh, probably 200 of them in a bucket back there. And I've used two thirds of them over the years for one thing or another. I mean, that's been 15 years ago. <laughs> so I am still using them. And somewhat to my wife's frustration, uh, we get rid of stuff. I, I keep stuff. I've got a whole container of stuff. And I keep telling her these are not useless pieces and stuff. They're just parts that I don't know where they go yet. And this is totally worthless unless you need it. <laughs> and then it's, you know, fantastic to have. But, yep, I'll put this one down there on the bottom and uh, get the holes marked. And I think this is going to do real good. I used it on the Retro as well. That's This is actually the same spacer that I used on my Retro. 3 16 if you're wondering and you're trying to find something to use yourself. You could also just use a stack of washers. I mean, honestly, that's what I would do if I didn't have this. I would just use a stack of washers and be done with it. All four holes are drilled. I'm going to take the tape off, clean up, deburr the holes. And if you don't know this, you can actually, with these pilot point bits, one thing I like about them, um, you can go get a larger, I think this is the 7 16 and by hand this will fit in the hole and you can use this carefully to deburr the hole because I'm about to touch it all up with uh, paint anyway and it's going to be clamped and hidden so if I scratch the paint up right around the hole I'm not very concerned about it. Uh, otherwise you can go get a, a bit for deburring holes. Um, you can use a, uh, a spud bit, is what I call them. Those tapered bits can be used. Uh, but I, I just like to do this. It works nicely and does the job. So I'm going to clean this up now.
So a little more touch up to do when I pulled the tape off it pulled a little bit of the uh, paint off with it probably just already loose there so it's gonna be behind the box no big deal all right I've got my touch up paint and my reading glasses so I can actually find the holes to touch up and I'm gonna be touching them up again these are gonna be hidden so I'm not too concerned about neatness it's more about rust protection but I'll do my best to be neat might as well make it as pretty as I can, huh? Who knows, maybe the next owner doesn't like this and takes it off and complains about me drilling holes all in the back. Could happen. And then this one, I'm going to go ahead and touch up that entire paint chip. I'd like to say that's the first time I've seen that happen, but it's not. The paint on the rigs, I have to admit, has improved dramatically over the years. It has improved, but you still get situations like that every now and then. Uh, you shouldn't be able to peel the paint off with basket tape. So I'm going to do the inside too. I got it all touched up. I'm going to clean up now and vacuum up the little bits of metal pieces. There's a few in the trunk I'm going to get out, uh, mainly from deburring. And I'm going to go in have a cup of tea, let this paint dry, and then when I come out I will hit it with a, uh, a wipe and wax, which uh, a detail wipe I just use to uh, clean the rigs up, and then I will mount the bracket and then put the can on and call it done. Well, I got it bolted on. It appears to clear everything. I'm ready to put the can in it now, and that'll be it. So let me drop that in there, and we'll see how well it fits. Well, it is on there. Everything clears. Plenty of room to this. If the trunk's locked, you can't open the can. You can't remove the can. There is tight space down there, but it clears. Nothing's touching. It's going to get muddy and road dirt all over it, but that's to be expected. Comes off, gets cleaned. Um, yeah, I, I think that's going to be good. We just need to get all the stuff that goes in it to go in it and organize the rest of it. My, my wife likes to have extra storage, if you can't tell. So between the trunk, the front, the back, and this can, it ought to be able to carry everything we need. All right, I went to rearrange the toolbox a little bit. Uh, that bottom screw or bolt was sticking out, so I very quickly efficiently and easily used a grinding wheel heel real quick just snip that right off like it was nothing so that's all that i took off of it and now the tool bag will lay there without uh, digging off through it so that is it i hope you enjoyed the video enough to like and subscribe and leave a like if you didn't enjoy the video enough to leave a like, then feel free to leave a dislike, but leave a comment too, and that's the bargain. If you leave a dislike, leave a comment to tell me what you want to see in the videos. 
and I will try to take that into account next time. But we have the toolbox down here, a little ammo toolbox, all installed, uh, locked in place. It's ready to go. You can't open it unless you take the spare tire off or open the lid. And uh, can't remove it without taking that off. So it's more involved than just unlatching and walking away. Plenty of clearance there. This looks good. So yeah, subscribe, like, hit the bell, let me know what you want to see next. And both of us will, will be enjoying our Ural motorcycles.